The early 80s were a terrible time for hair, denim, and burgers. Now, I don't have the expertise to talk about the first two, but burgers, that I can do. So in the early 80s, everyone in America was afraid of fat. And when it comes to burgers, if there's not enough fat, you don't want to eat that burger. So fat plays a couple of really key roles. We're gonna talk about a few of those. The first, let's get into the crust. So when you lay a burger into a hot skillet, you're witnessing one of the most amazing reactions that take place in the kitchen. It's actually a series of reactions called the Maillard reactions, which result in deep browning and the production of hundreds of enticing new flavor compounds. And there are a couple of things you need for that Maillard reaction to take place. You need heat, you need amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, and you need small sugars. These last two are already present in the beef. But a burger is a complete Maillard system because it also has fat. When you lay that burger in the skillet, the fat renders, conducts heat beautifully across the whole surface, and you get awesome Maillard browning and a really delicious crust. Okay, so that's the crust. Let's zoom in to a perfectly medium rare burger. So you have to think of a perfectly cooked medium rare burger, like a perfect in-season ripe peach. And both of them are just loaded with all of these juices that are barely held in place. When you take a bite of that peach, juices just gush out. It's the same thing with that burger. The fat renders and provides both tenderness and the perception of juiciness. But there's another thing involved in keeping that burger really, really tender so that it comes apart just like a fresh peach. And that is how you grind the meat. Most cuts that we use for burgers come from fatty, flavorful cuts all over the cow. And these are usually from muscles that are heavily worked. All of that exercise they get produces a ton of flavor. It also produces tons of heavily cross-linked collagen. Now, collagen is a really tough protein. It's this triple helix that a lot of times we break down through long extended cooking, like in beef burgundy or in barbecue. But there's another way to deal with it. When it comes to burgers, that means grinding it up. So when you grind muscle fibers, you sever them into small pieces and you also sever all that collagen. You make burger really, really tender and easy to eat. But that's not the whole picture. When you grind meat, you also release a sticky protein called myosin. Now a little bit of myosin is good because it keeps your burger held together, but too much and you end up with a tough, dense burger, which is what we're trying to avoid in the first place by grinding up the meat. So take a look at this experiment. We ground this meat in three different ways. It's coarse ground, medium ground, and finely ground. You can see that the coarse ground just crumbles right through my fingers. Medium ground is a little bit sticky and the finely ground is really sticky. So when you cook these off, you get burgers that go from tender all the way to tough. Now commercial producers, what they do is they take meat from this cow, actually it's usually thousands of cows, they grind it really fast through this machine and they pack it really firmly into this package. So by the time you get your hands on it from the supermarket, it's already tough and it already makes a dense burger. So there's actually a better way to do this and it's do it yourself. So the first step is to choose one of these fatty, flavorful, tough cuts. Then you wanna cut the meat into cubes, you wanna freeze it on a sheet pan like this, grind it in your food processor like this, and then gently pack it into a burger. So let's take a look at how big of an impact grinding at home makes. The burger on the left is home ground beef, the one on the right is store-bought, and I'm using a texture analyzer, which is a very nerdy piece of equipment, to squish both burgers to tell how tough they are. You can see that the one that is store-bought beef is a lot tougher than the home ground one. Great, okay, so now all we have to do, we've ground our meat, we've made our gently packed patty, we just need to cook it. We get a skillet really, really hot, we sear it on both sides, we get that beautiful Maillard browning, and we cook it until it's 125 degrees in the center, which is medium rare. Slap on some American cheese, maybe ketchup, onions, mayo, I like a potato bun, and this is how to eat a burger. Did you like that video? Did you learn something? Well, hit that subscribe button and never miss a future episode.